Hello, Interworld. I have been slowly creeping up in my sub numbers and I am embarrassed to say I'm getting a little bit like other YouTubers, which I don't want to categorise myself at ever. Uh, but I'm feeling grateful to uh, the, the faceless world out there who are subscribing to my channel. Thank you for that. I do appreciate it. And a few of you are commenting and I am, um, it's nice. It's, it's actually quite nice. I don't want uh, attention. Uh, I'm quite happy with giving myself attention, attending to myself, uh, but thank you. So that out of the way, I wanted to talk about, um, I always forget terms in television. And I don't mean terms and conditions. I mean the terms that we use in the professional world for stuff, uh, for job roles particularly. Uh, I am a. I started out. Uh, the BBC was pretty good. I started out in the BBC in the nineties, and I was a trainee assistant producer there, uh, which is a course they don't run uh, anymore. Uh, when I did it, it was something that I'm sorry about the alerts going off here. Cut can do something about it. I'm going to leave it, ignore it. Can't, don't, can't be bothered. When I started out at the Beeb, I was uh, a trainee assistant producer. The course was a trainee assistant producing scheme. Uh, something like 4,000 people at the time applied. This was before YouTube, uh, before everyone had a camera in their phone that was of, of any sort of uh, worth. And everyone wanted to work in television. It was very much an exclusive world. So 4,000 4, people would apply for this course and they would take eight people on. So I was part of these. this eight. I was uh, successful enough to get through. And I was two years training at the BBC as an assistant producer. What that meant was that the scheme was kind of recognised within uh, Television Centre, which is the main hub where I was in White City uh, in the west of London. The course was recognised as kind of like an elite group of people though i'm positive i wasn't i'm by no means elite i'm confident i was selected through positive discrimination because i had a scottish accent and because the bbc is partly government supported funded responsible to and uh you know people pay a tax to have the bbc and that money goes directly towards programming etc I think there was a certain amount of pressure on the BBC to get rid of the Oxford, Cambridge, the Oxbridge uh, uh, staff in figures that they currently had. So a Scottish guy coming along <laughs> kind of made, probably made good sense in terms of numbers for them. Anyway, I was there two years. Um, it was like 15 grand a year job. Uh, I was perfectly happy with that. Uh, out of university, that's like amazing. Uh, I don't think there's any any overtime ever but uh the my point is that when i started there uh they were just introducing um uh what are they called i forgot what dv tapes oh god my mind is so long ago uh dv tapes were being introduced uh and this was like the new medium of dv uh digital video so everything was being recorded not magnetically onto the tape it was all like zeros and ones and the picture was been translated noiselessly onto a, a tape and then being able to be reproduced without going through any sort of magnetic process or rubbing across a head or anything like that it was all lasers it was fab uh, and as a result it's meant that the picture quality essentially was very very good now um it wasn't. It was shit. And um, because the sensors were small, uh, the reason pictures looked good with, uh, you know, qualified crews using beta cameras or digi betas as they became was usually because they had uh, skills in lighting, they had sound recordists, all the elements that went into making a package uh, to be edited involved professionals responsible for that particular area. So, sound recordist, lighting guy camera guy and we always had this term uh, cameraman is a, a term i sort of grew up with but when these dv tapes came out uh it, 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 they um they started giving them to essentially researchers and assistant producers to go and film stuff flying the wall style documentary making was uh, a big 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 thing at the bbc they had what they called side channels side channels were like the early form of all the extra uh, channels that exist now I initially uh, my first series producer role was doing something with a guy called Charlie Brooker uh, called The Kit 
which was a put on a channel called BBC Knowledge, which is a side channel. It didn't. It was an awful show. I wrote fifty two uh, half hours, wrote, directed, produced <laughs> fifty two half hours. Uh, with Charlie Brooker and a brilliant person called Gia Malinovich, who's the wife of uh, Brian Cox, Professor Brian Cox. Anyway, so I did that show, and um, we were all being given these DV cameras, and they were <laughs> basically the thinking was it's really good picture quality, therefore anyone can use it and anyone can create content. But the reality was that people were going out using lights badly or not being qualified to use lighting of any power. So it was all like really rubbishy lighting. They weren't proper sound recorders, so they didn't have mixing desks. It was mic and put straight into the camera. So the the picture quality was pretty poor. Um, and when they did research with viewers about what they thought about this new sort of DV technology, uh, the viewers who didn't know it was DV technology just said, well, we, we can see that the picture's terrible, but we uh, can hear the content and therefore follow the narrative, therefore we're happy. So that was like the consensus consensive consensus consensive that was the consensus after um they did some surveys and it is interesting which taught me that storytelling is the important part of any of this and people get obsessed with cameras and fitting around with cameras and steady cams and this is why i'm a big, ad big advocate of just buying rubbishy kit like cheap kit there's you know um it's it, it because I've bought so much expensive equipment in the past and just it's just sat there and I've never been able to make my money back and it, it loses its value uh, and you know it's not worthwhile you might you might you're much better off buying cheapish kit doing whatever you want to do if you get a professional job and they want to pay professional money then you hire the kit for that job anyway I'm getting off uh, the, the what I wanted to talk about which is the term cameraman uh, so because everyone was being given these cameras the uh, essentially producers were being given cameras they weren't really people who were very qualified in terms of the technicalities of understanding what goes into video quality they didn't understand azimuth they didn't understand you know um ebu or uh or, or, or necessarily what white balance was we knew we had to press a button we didn't know uh about light we didn't know about apertures we didn't know about f-stops uh but we all had cameras so but so it wasn't really uh, appropriate to call these people cameramen essentially because there was no longer a, a solely male pursuit there were some fantastically successful and 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 uh, it's not even worth mentioning because it's just a fact it is not a man's job to operate a camera so the term that came was camera operator so um that's not how i normally say the word operator operator so the term camera operator came about and uh i just got used to using it and then when i hear terms like cameraman i kind of get a little bit funny about it because it seems to be so exclusive and i noticed in a tweet this morning from the daily mail they had mentioned this attacks in cologne uh, and the camera woman it said one word uh was recounting you know when she filmed it now of course that's a massively sensitive issue but i sort of picked up on this term camera woman and commented on it on twitter and before you know it i've got like a bunch of daily mail readers hounding me for for like being triggered and you know <laughs> I'm so not, uh, and 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 being like, oh, you can't say anything anymore if we upset people, and uh, yeah, and somebody said the term, said the phrase, you know, if it's a spade, call it a spade. I said, well, by that theory, you're calling her a woman and a camera. That doesn't work for me either. So I started actually trolling them a little bit by just engaging in the conversation. Uh, but but the correct term, uh, I think. For somebody who operates a camera as a camera operator, um, I'm sorry it's not anything grander than that. Um, but then I've encountered since, uh, as I travel through the journey in television that I'm doing, I recently did some documentaries where I encountered this term DOP. Um, and I can assure you that uh, we're not doing anything different making a documentary than we are making any other television programme. Uh, there's no reason why this Grand Wise title should be appointed to somebody. And the only difference I can see through them having it is that they get more money or they are entitled to ask for more money because I'm not a camera operator. I'm a director of photography. And 
it, it just isn't true. You're they aren't. I mean, yes, li- using lighting is a skill, but lighting camera operators have been around for a long, long time before it was lighting camera men, probably ca- lighting camera women. But the term has sort of stuck that you're a lighting camera operator. Or, you know, so there are some old-fashioned people who still use the lighting cameraman if they're a man. Uh, and I, I, I'm actually not all that bothered about it, but it's kind of... You'll never see a job advert saying wanted cameraman unless it's by some two-bit new start-up production company who doesn't know any better. It's just not... I don't care about PC, but it's 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 just exclu- exclusive. You can't advertise for a cameraman because... Uh, it's not correct. It's not, they're not men. So, that's that's just my thinking. And this isn't about sexism and getting into all that. I'm really, really not bothered about any of that. It's just not right. It's just not the right word for it. And it's just not what I was brought up. You know, this is 20 years ago that we started abandoning it because um, you had producers who were operating cameras. And so you started getting all these new terms, which was self-shooting producer director or shooting director. You know, um, I've been finding that some of the self-shooting PDs I've been working with and met have actually been camera operators and they've gone more into directing people as they're operating the camera and sort of producing the content as they go, you know, writing the script or uh, uh, doing briefs of the stories that they're they're gathering. Uh, And sometimes that's pretty good, I think, because... I think the producing game is quite easy to pick up. Uh, I don't think it's particularly uh, difficult. I do think the key to being a good producer or director is to be able to uh, engage uh, well with people and, and kind of and, and, and kind of tune into their thought processes as you're interviewing them. So I guess that's kind of it, really. I just wanted to make a, a, a call on this term, cameraman and camera woman. Uh, is that a phrase you use still? Uh, I, I know that there'll be a lot of people who may decide to go, ah, oh, this is just PC gone gone mad. It, you can say that. You might be right. The, the fact is that it's just not a term I certainly don't use it anymore, and I don't use it for any political reason. I couldn't care less. Uh, but it's just not used. It's not accurate. Um, I, I do object to the term uh, director of photography for, you know, for shoots that just have a camera guy you know camera guy <laughs> or a uh, 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 a sound recordist and and a director it's kind of uh, doping is just it, for me it's meh, not too happy with that cinematographer i even have a problem with that it's just uh, you know people get so inflated ego wise about their role in life <laughs> the, the creativity of themselves um, and a lot of it's down to technicians and everyone in the, in, in, you know, how pretty something looks is often uh, the call of many, many people being involved. It's like Jim Henson. I don't believe for a minute Jim Henson made a every single puppet. Or did he? I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know. But there's a, definitely a collaborative effort there. So I'm rambling on. But what do you think? Cameraman, camera woman, do you care? Uh, what do you call yourself? Uh, what do you see as being the role of a cinematographer? Videographer, there's another one. Uh, if anyone's familiar with uh, what's-his-face, I can never remember his name, Philip Bloom. Uh, I, pre- I can't stand Philip Bloom. The reason I, 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 right, I've got reasons I can't stand Philip Bloom, and that is that um, all the films he makes, which look very pretty, all lack narrative drive. There is an over emphasis on pretty pictures and over emphasis on uh what what he does is i think he creates 25 stills a second he he comes across as a stills photographer to me um and i i and i think there's there's such a uh an orgy of of obsession with the subtle lighting and everything that he completely forgets the point of it uh so but at the same time embraces his himself as a personality and puts himself out there as a personality and carries himself with an air of uh, coolness 
and a sw- there's a swagger to Philip Bloom that I, I yeah it's just me I don't like it I don't like people swaggering so that doesn't appeal to me but the term videographer has uh, for me are people who make wedding videos which is kind of like really demeaning but if you've ever made a wedding video which I have I've made about three or four they're incredibly demeaning you are it's like doing events when you do an event and you're like a self-shooting producer director you are treated like um, invisible staff you um you know i was i was people saying hey video video man video man that's what people were shouting at me when i did an event recently and when that happens you just think well okay it's your money i'll just take your cash i'll be video man i'll just take your cash uh be a little bit more half i'll be half-hearted uh because you have no appreciation for for my skills therefore if i produce something that's a bit rubbish um you'll be happy with it and that's what you'll expect uh, you know, it's kind of, um, there's a lot of value in valuing people, but there's no value in people ramping themselves up. I'm sounding like a hypocrite. One hand, I'm saying, oh, hold on, you don't think cinematographers should call themselves cinematographers, but at the same hand, you don't like being treated like crap when you're doing uh, wedding videos or doing corporate events. Yeah, yeah, right, there's a contradiction there. There's definitely um, a skill to do what we do. Um, some of us are much better at it than others. I'm certainly not by any means particularly good. <laughs> should say that <laughs> but uh but uh you know i think there's something that i have that is that is of value to some people i have no idea what do you think Where, in terms of job roles in television and film industry have you got any opinions about it i'd love to know i just want to get the ball rolling cameraman or camera woman which is correct neither neither or all of them put it down below cash that is not not a comment <laughs>